kueleke mahal leo ya nyanyuki ambapo waziri wa vikosi vya kijeshi nchini Uingereza anatarajiwa kufanya kikao na wanahabari hivi sasa kueleza msimamo kuhusu mawaji ya Agnes Wanjiru mkenya anadaiwa kuwa wana mwanajeshi kutoka Uingereza hebu tusikize Well that concerns me enormously and what I've just said to representatives of the community and what the Secretary of State for Defence Ben Wallace and I have made absolutely clear to everybody who works with the British Ministry of Defence and the British Armed Forces is that if there are further allegations that come to light absolutely no stone will be left unturned in making sure that we provide all of the information necessary for the Kenyan authorities to investigate those claims the UK has nothing to hide here we want these investigations to be dealt with as quickly as possible we want those responsible to be brought to justice because Agnes and her family have already had to wait too long for these cases to be resolved. We need that now to be investigated and brought to the courts here in Kenya as quickly as is possible and any further allegations that come to light will be dealt with with the same urgency on our part. Last question. Of course. Um, have you met Agnes Tongue? He's the one taking care of the baby and had any discussions with them? No, I haven't. Um, but I think that it would be entirely appropriate for uh, somebody from the British mission here in Kenya to do that. If I had the time in my program, I think I would. Uh, I think that it is perfectly possible. In fact, I think it's important for the UK government to show our solidarity with Agnes's family, our belief that she has a right to justice, her daughter has a right to justice. And I think it's perfectly possible that we can meet without prejudicing the case and without admitting culpability. Uh, and I'd like the team here uh, on the British mission to look at how we might do that in the very near future. Um, sir. Well, I mean, these are uh, legal matters that will need to be considered in time, but at my, I think that the Secretary of State for Defence has been clear that if the investigation leads to charges against a British service person, that he will make sure that the Kenyan investigation and legal proceedings are fully supported. I have to be honest with you and say I'm not immediately clear right now on the jury, on the, um, the uh, arrangements for extradition between the UK and Kenya, but absolutely everybody in the UK government is aware of how Agnes's case has affected the Kenyan public and we want you to know that we take that very seriously. We want justice to be done for her. Uh, also the of course. Kenyan parliament, a section of the MPs yesterday said that if uh, the suspects are not tried in Kenya, they are not extradited to Kenya, they are going to cancel the military part between Kenya and the UK. What do you think of that? Well, your parliament is sovereign and your parliamentarians may make whatever judgment they wish to make. I think that that... Uh, would cause a lot of problems for the people that I've met with this evening because the message that I got from them was very clear. They and their community are angry about what happened to Agnes. They are angry that there are allegations that British service people were involved uh, in that murder. But at the same time, they recognize that Batuk here in Nanuki in Laikipia County is a big cause source of employment. It brings lots of value into the local economy. And so the message that I just had from the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce here in Nanuki is please don't shut the gates. Please don't keep yourselves to yourselves. Stay, keep investing in our community because the jobs that you create and the businesses that you support really value it. Now that is a balance. That doesn't mean that I take Agnes's case any less seriously. It is my top priority right now. We need to get things moving with the investigation and the UK MOD needs to make sure that we're providing all of the information necessary. But I would also say to my parliamentary colleagues here in Kenya, 
that they need to listen to the business people here in the community in Nanuki who see the value of Batuk and see the value of our training mission here. And they need to speak to the Kenyan Armed Forces, the Kenyan Air Force and the Kenyan Navy who are benefiting from working alongside the British Army, the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy. The UK-Kenya relationship is big, it is important, it is strategic in a part of Africa that is looking increasingly uncertain and unstable. I get politics, I'm a politician too, but I hope that they can see the bigger picture and that we can prioritise justice for Agnes, not politics. Final question from me. Can we go? Uh, go on quickly and then I must go over here. Why did it take for Amelia Ekin to say for the British government to act on the growing cases of misconduct from their personnel, especially in foreign countries? And what specific actions are you taking? Well, why has it taken so long, I think, is something that we should all reflect on. Uh, there are parts of the delay that are made here in Kenya and there are parts of the delay that are made in London and I know that politicians in both countries will want to ask some very challenging questions of ourselves and our officials to understand why this has taken so long. What happens now from the UK part is that the Secretary of State for Defence has been absolutely clear with the Chief of the General Staff, who leads the British Army, with the Provost Marshal, who is responsible for policing within the British Armed Forces, that there will be no delay whatsoever in providing whatever evidence is asked for by the Kenyan investigation. And I know because one of the suspects in the case is no longer serving in the British Armed Forces, that the British civilian police, the Lancashire police, are also involved in the investigation. They too are aware of the importance and they too are acting with all speed to make sure there's no further delay.